Hello, I'm Don Moyer from Moyer Marine. Our assignment today is to set the ignition timing in this freshly rebuilt Atomic 4 engine. Now, throughout this entire process, we'll be following Universal's recommendation, which was to set the ignition point at the precise time that the piston in the flywheel end of the engine comes to the very top of its compression stroke. This point in the engine's rotation is commonly referred to as being set at number one top dead center. The first step in finding number one top dead center is to manually rotate the engine in a counterclockwise direction until you just begin to feel compression in the first cylinder. It's virtually impossible to use the starter in accomplishing this first step. You'll either fall short or you'll go zipping right past your entire compression stroke. We recommend, therefore, to always turn the engine manually, even if it means hiring a friend for a six pack of beer to assist you. He can perhaps turn the prop shaft behind the engine or under the transmission in the case of a V-drive configured engine. Whenever the flywheel end of the engine is accessible, you can usually just simply grab the flywheel and rotate it manually or use one of our two ignition timing tools. This one has a handle that lines up with the roll pin. The relevance of that will be explained in a few moments. Or in tighter locations, you may prefer this tool which has the benefit of being able to be used with a ratchet and three quarter inch socket. Uh, both this tool is also marked to keep track of where the roll pin is. Always rotate the engine in a counterclockwise direction. And remember as you're turning it, you're trying to feel for pressure against your finger over the spark plug hole. That will indicate the piston is on the way up. And remember, you can, you're, you can never be more than two revolutions from top dead center as you're turning. And there I'm feeling compression on my finger at this very moment, so I'm going to stop turning and get ready for the next step. Having established that the number one piston is definitely in its upward travel on its compression stroke, we now need to determine when the piston is at the actual top of this stroke. The roll pin provides us a convenient reference point for establishing when the piston is at the very top of its stroke. Uh, it's important now to understand that the factory installs the roll pin so that it lines up vertically whenever the piston in number one is at the top of its stroke. If we catch the very beginning of the compression stroke, the roll pin will be essentially horizontal, meaning that we have 90 degrees of rotation to go before the piston will be at the very top of its stroke. So I'll do that right now with this timing handle. There it's vertical, the roll pin is vertical, and we know that the number one piston now is in fact at the very top of its compression stroke our number one top dead center. Now if for any reason you can't feel compression in the number one cylinder, there's an alternate way of determining when the piston is starting up for its compression stroke, and that is by using the uh, movement of the intake valve. The intake valve in every cylinder is the valve directly straight down from the spark plug hole. If we turn the engine in the normal rotation counterclockwise and observe the pencil, we'll come to a place when we'll feel the intake valve opening and the pencil will start to come up as it's doing right now. We keep turning until the valve goes back down again as it's doing now. When it's fully down, we can stop turning and we'll observe that the roll pin is once again horizontal, meaning that the piston is just starting up on its compression stroke. So once again, we will put the timing tool back on, go with that extra 90 degrees of turn, 
spring and roll pin vertical. And number one piston is again at the top of its compression stroke. If for any reason the roll pin is simply not visible, you have little choice but to take a flashlight and look through the spark plug hole away from the manifold side of the engine and you can then just catch the near side of the piston coming into view as it crests at the top of its stroke. If you can't get your head in location to see the piston, you can take a piece of safety wire and again feel the top of the piston as it crests at the top of its stroke. Having set the engine rotation to number one top dead center, it comes time to install the distributor. Uh, installing a distributor is mostly a matter of getting the tip of the rotor pointing in the proper direction. On late model engines, the alternator belt will rub on one of the four corners of the distributor cap unless the tip of the rotor is pointing directly away from the block. The bevel gears on a distributor require that we back the rotor a little bit upstream from where we want it to end up so that when the distributor goes fully down in the location, the tip will be pointing where we want it to. And that's one notch too far. There it is. It's pointing as close as we can get it away from the direction of the block. The only distinction between early model and late model engines in the entire timing sequence is that on early model engines, the tip of the rotor needs to be pointed directly aft away from the flywheel end of the engine. That's so that the external condenser and the little oiler tube on the base of the distributor won't be contacting little cast iron hinged oil fill lid. With the distributor correctly installed with respect to the orientation of the tip of the rotor and the hold down bracket loosely installed, we can rotate the housing of the distributor so that the alignment tab on the breaker plate lines up directly under the tip of the rotor. This will set up the approximate timing of the distributor as well as the location of the number one spark plug wire post in the cap. With the leads from the points or the igniter connected to the coil, in the case of the igniter, red lead to positive and black lead to negative, the easiest way to fine tune the actual place of ignition is to connect a continuity testing light across the primary terminals of the coil as we slowly rotate the distributor body one way and then the other, observing the light going off and on as we do. The place we're looking for is when the light is just going out like there, that's when the ignition is actually being delivered to the first uh, cylinder. At that point, we will tighten down the hold down bracket and the Timing is complete. Now later when the engine's finally back in the boat and it can be operated under load, Universal always recommended power timing the engine, which is nothing more than setting your favorite cruising RPM and then loosening the hold down bracket one more time so you can slowly rotate the distributor a little bit in each direction. You're looking for a place of higher RPM. If you find higher RPM in either direction, lock the hold down bracket down once again in that new location. If you find the RPM decaying a little bit each direction you move the distributor, it means your flyweights have done a perfect job in advancing the ignition for your favorite cruising RPM. Simply lock the bracket down where it was. That completes the entire timing process from end to end. Uh, we hope that this will take some of the mystery out of the process for you should you find yourself needing to time your engine from beginning to end sometime in the future. Thank you for your time and your attention.